White Labs Marketing Agency. Uh, today's guest, we have Brian. Brian, feel free to uh, let our viewer, viewers know a little bit more about yourself. Sure. My name is Brian Adams. And we had, is everything okay? There's a bunch of percentage signs moving around the whole time. You're, you're all good. Okay. I, I lost you for a sec, but you're all good. Uh, anyway, I'd have these art students draw these pictures and then I would get the treasures in with the, and we would build these t-shirts because I recognized that like people needed identity, right? They wear them today with things like Hermes or, you know, Louis Vuitton, but back then they needed them with things like fraternity letters and clubs and organizations. From there, I started a bar. From there, I got into the pick and delivery laundry business to whereas I made deals with the university so that the bill would go home to your parents, your parents would pay us to be able to have laundry service that hire the old guy from the bar he'd go around in a truck that we bought take the items to wash the tears and dry cleaners peg them back and pick them up from you and i'd already had the money from there i took the money and i went to the university to chicago i took my money i went and traded on the merc this is probably before a lot of y'all know what it is 45 years old i went and was trading live in feeder cattle said this is watch a guy you know basically commit suicide and no one really, it was crazy crazy mm -hmm. crazy crazy back in the days when that open outcry where you're trading on the floor when you saw the people screaming. But from then, I really went back to college and really tried to grow the business that I have. It's called Bama Butler. I had moved to go and bring one of my best friends to come in to run the business. And in doing so, after running that, I got, you know, my first real dose of being a, being an entrepreneur, you know, gave my friend a rubber stamp with my name on it. I got to learn a bunch of lessons about what not to do. I went and started another business in Houston, Texas. We ran it up. We were in the um, industrial cleaning business and the restoration business sold to a private equity group. This equity group with a bunch of guys from Harvard, they wouldn't listen after we bought it. They told me we were going to recap it. It was all going to be wonderful. I bought it back less than four years later out of bankruptcy from the bank for less than 1% I sold it for. Then went and bought a recycling business. And that recycling business, we recycled about 100 million pounds of plastic and rubber. Fully integrated, fully sustainable to go and try to sell rubber boards against wood boards to things like the government. I moved the business to India, couldn't make it work, got into the industrial laundry business, COVID affected, got into the pre-retail business. Pre-retail business, we would get large containers of items over and we would do something to them before they were sold to the beginning. Then got asked to get into the returns business. Then from the returns business, we got asked to get into the software business. From the software business, we got asked to further get into the back-end logistics. So, you know, we've always been kind of the back-end for the reverse logistics. So whether it's recycling, re-commerce, returns, whatever, that's what we do here in Houston. Houston at Retail Reworks, we're launching a national network with about 90 stores around the country, return centers, and these return centers are able to do everything from the outer edges, including we have our own logistics fleet to move these things around, you know, about 50% of what the current option is right now to the marketplace, making everyone more sustainable and more profitable. Awesome. Well, most of our uh, viewers are entrepreneurs. What are, I'm sure you've had a lot. You touch on briefly, what are some challenges you've had and how did you overcome them? Scars. I got lots of scars. Um, I've, you know, I've had lots of lot. I, ha I have lots of people working. For, I've had lots of people working for me. I've had to, you know, reinvent myself a lot of times. I've done lots of entrepreneurial things. I've, I've done the YPOs. I've done the EOs. I've done the strategic coaches. I've done the, you know, YECs. I've done all that stuff. I was in Inc. I, I did all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, you want to get recognition. You want to be a part, you know. Um, you want to learn, you know, you, you constantly want to be learning. Um, and so, you know, what, what have I learned as an entrepreneur or, and how have I overcome it? Um, you know, you know, my biggest, my biggest thing that I've done is, is that I've put myself around other entrepreneurs and become a student to them. And I don't really care about the success they've had. I care less that they caught lightning in a bottle and were able to create X, Y, Z. But you know what I mean? Like when it's the founder of Airbnb, when I met him, like I only cared about the 14 year, 14 and a half years prior that he started that business to it going public. Like I want to hear about all the no's and all the failures. And I want to learn from that. Mm -hmm. And so I've gone off and learned a lot and, you know, you got to be, you got to be resilient, man. Cause you know, as it gets bigger and bigger, the arrows get real hard shot at you and they hurt oh. sometimes. Awesome. So what, what makes your brands 
and yourself different than any other, anybody else? What makes you different or better? What makes you different or better? Man, if, if you don't understand the vision of what you're trying to do or the mission or the values you're trying to do, it's real hard to differentiate yourself. So, you know, we try to shorten the journey and give an excellent experience, right? And so mm -hmm. what does shorten the journey mean? We're trying to get the item from point A to point B most cost-effective, sustainable, and profitable way for the brands. Mm -hmm. And so how you do that, you got to do good business. There's a lot mm -hmm. of bad business being done in the past, right? So like you have to do good business first, first and foremost. And there was a lot of bad business in this space being done in the past prior to, you know, when valuations were out of whack and when SVB happened in the Silicon Valley Bank, when that triggers, when interest rates go up and the dollar gets stronger and commodity items like gold and oil don't shoot through the roof. That's mm -hmm. a huge signal. And you have to understand what that means. And what that means is that the dollar got stronger, right? Because oil mm -hmm. should be at like 200. So what that means is cash is king. So that's called the great reset. So valuations okay. that were valued at future earnings. If you go look at companies that were in the retail tech space, that were once valued during 20 at 20 to 30 times gross revenues are now trading on a cash flow multiple of three to four times. So now their value or their equity is negative. And their own, and they got to understand what that that means to be able to then sense. find friction, right? Right? How do you reduce friction and make make your services a win for the person in front of you and a win for the person behind you, right? Mm -hmm. So really having a core understanding of what your core competency is. What do we do best for someone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's the answer to the question. So what do I do best, right? And so and how can we monetarily prove that? And what are the metrics behind that? So you know, I, I've I've grown up in a business where it's a service based business and we grew up competing for work on the streets and service providers. So I'll give you an example. Let's just say you're carpet cleaners and there's two companies that are carpet cleaners. They have the exact same people working, but they work from different families. They just have different uniforms. They both have the same vans. They're just wrapped in different colors and they both have the same machines in there. Uh -huh. And both of them, all of their employees took baths and shave that morning. Okay. Which one of those companies, how do they differentiate themselves? Right? So what you can say is, hey, look, mine's better. Yeah. I did a better job. And you're going to say, hi, how? Well, I, mine's cleaner. Our <laughs> carpets that we were cleaner. Uh -huh. And the other person you say, no, no, we're the, we clean the, the best. Uh, I get right? it. Right? Remember? Yeah. yeah. Better, better, yeah. best. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right? So we're better. At the end of the day, right, it's which one cares the most, who's cleanest, right? So at the end of the day, the only way that those two companies can differentiate themselves is that owner has to say, I care more. Mm -hmm. That's the only way a service-based business can compete. Makes, Not makes, compete in, in service-based businesses. Like, I don't take possession of inventory. Mm -hmm. I'm not selling anything. We're providing services. Makes, it and makes the answer to what we do best is we can make you the most sustainable, the most profitable and the most circular. Awesome. So that's that's really what we do. And there's a lot of metrics behind it that says what you do better. But at the end of the day, as an entrepreneur, I would advise all of your listeners to be real clear on what they're trying to do. What's the mission? Mm -hmm. And when you nail that down, every bit of language has to be around that. Uh, makes total sense. That's awesome. Brian, what's, what's your future plan as an entrepreneur and with your brands? You know, when I was in school, they didn't have entrepreneurial programs. Mm -hmm. There weren't entrepreneurial departments and colleges. I've sat on the board and very close to the University of Alabama's, um, you know, department, entrepreneurial department. I've sat very, very close to that. And I've learned a lot. You know, the, the first thing that I've learned is, is that I don't know what they're teaching. Like, what are they teach? Like, how can you teach someone to be an entrepreneur? Don't understand that. Yeah, you can't really. Yeah, like you're going to teach someone how to have heart. You're going to teach someone how to be resilient. You're going to teach someone how to handle stress. Yeah, I mean, you can't look, teach it. yeah, right. You can't teach that. And can you teach someone acumen? I don't know if you can teach people acumen. I learn that every day. I'm not quite sure. Can you go take $1 and make $3? I mean, can't it's teach it. As, yeah, yeah, it's as simple as that. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. the first thing that, you know, in my entrepreneurial journey is that, you know, I am an entrepreneur by heart. Like in a space of nothing, I enjoy creating something. Mm -hmm. So along my journey, what's next is, is that, you know, I'm passionate about building things. You know, it's my true love and nature of where I'm most happy is, is that I love to build things. I love to be a, a creator and building things. I mean, I don't really love like employee reviews and reading <laughs> financial statements with... Who likes that? I mean, come on. 
yeah, that's not that fun. Um, but yeah. you got to do those things because businesses have to make money and they keep you accountable. So along my journey, I started with partners. I got away from partners. My new deal has partners. I'm excited to partner, to be a good partner. I'm real excited about that for my entrepreneurial journey. I'm excited along the lines of, you know, paving our own way, you know, underutilized assets, you know, helping a another industry you know because at the end of the day that's what it's all about so yeah, yeah. at the end of the day you already have an existing asset doing something how do you maximize that asset even though look you have a right and left hand right they look the same but do mm -hmm. they have the same capabilities no someone else a more dominant hand so look it's just like i teach my young son how to learn a new distinction right a new distinction might be learning how to ride a bike for the first time or learn how to dribble a basketball with your left hand it's uncomfortable but until it's not uncomfortable and uh, you know that's a, that's a fun part of it too i'm with you it's a good answer yeah. what what are some successful activities you've done to promote your brands what's some successful activities i've done to promote my brands man you know i bought businesses but i'm real good at starting businesses because mm -hmm. when you buy businesses you inherit the phone number and when you start yeah. a business you get to go pick the new phone number right <laughs> and i like to pick the new phone number because then you know where all the you know uh, bodies are buried in the closets and yeah. you don't have to go pick out someone else's so what is the most fun i've ever done to okay i'll tell you one i used to be in this business that had these like charitable golf tournaments yeah and i played in a lot <laughs> yeah it, it was for insurance claims associations wow. Yeah. And everyone pretty much did the same thing. They just had different colors shirts yeah. on and different colored <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I've, I've played in an insurance golf tournament before. Yeah, it's very funny. You have? <laughs> I have, yeah. yeah what yeah. were you doing before? I mean, I've, I've been in digital marketing for a long time, but I was invited to a golf tournament. Every single person was a either a public adjuster, an insurance adjuster. Oh, wow. Okay, exactly that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a claims association. Now, how did you get invited to that one? Uh, somebody uh, probably couldn't make it, and they brought me in as a ringer. <laughs> so, Are you a big golfer? Yeah, I'm a big golfer. I live in South Florida. I'm a big golfer, yeah. Uh, where'd you grow up playing? I grew, I, I'm in Deerfield Beach right now. I grew up, I live in Chicago, too, for a while, but I've, I've golfed all over it. You, you know South Florida golf? I played golf in college, Division okay. One. I. I have a 14-year-old son going after it pretty good. I feel like I know the world by golf courses pretty well, so try me. Well, I, I, I just played, you know, Osprey and Boca. Of course. A, Osprey, a Deer Creek. Um, I've played, a, you know, I play, uh, what am I playing? I'm playing West I just played, Pine, I just played you say? Pine Tree and Everglades. Yeah, yeah, that's out yeah, there. Yeah. Right. You're playing Balti, is that what you said? Uh, tomorrow, I am playing Westchester. It's beautiful. Yeah. I played tomorrow the West there. And then yeah. I have friends that are members at PGA National. Fun. Up yeah. there, playing the Where do you chapter. live? You live in South Florida? I live in Deerfield Beach, yeah. Yeah. Where'd you grow up in Chicago? I lived all over Chicago. I went to high school um, in Plainfield. Mm -hmm. After that, I lived in- That's in, another great uh, golf course in Jersey. What'd you say? Plainfield's another great golf course. Yeah, in, in Jersey, yeah. I, I yeah. went to, in Chicago, I went to school in, in, in Plainfield. High school in Plainfield. I went to college at Northern Illinois, which is in DeKalb. There's nothing there. And then I grew up- then I lived Isn't that in, where like, uh, Tony Tony Romo went? Tony Romo went to Eastern Illinois. Eastern Illinois. Yeah, Kyle Northern Maxwell Illinois. lives in Houston. He played the number one player on the golf team out there. He's a great amateur player. Chicago's yeah. probably got the, I was speaking with John O'Donnell. Mm -hmm. This week he owns Johnny O, the brand. Yeah, huge yeah, golfer, yeah. huge, huge golfer. Remember Pine Valley, LACC. I grew up in Chicago and he's a member of a place called Shore Acres, which is- Shore Acres, okay. Yeah, Shore Acres is the best. But that or Beverly or you know, Chicago Golf Club. Um, those are probably the most premier in Chicago. Then you get into mm. the Butlers and Cock Hills and Medinas and those type of things. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But Chicago, you know, you can even go up to the, you know, Black Sheeps and to the Boba Links and mm -hmm. to the, to that world Lakeshore. You know, I grew up playing AJGA and, um, Luke Donald was my age. And so oh, awesome. <laughs> we were in the same AJGA class. Um, and I was a second team All American. He was first team, you know, number one of the number one players in the country. Of course. Uh, he got really good in college. They were just world beaters, right? I grew up playing with Charles Howe. And I and I say this all the time to these young kids, right, who want to play golf. Like, you don't understand. When he was 13, he was beating the 18 year olds. Yeah. Back yeah. then. Yeah. Like he knew how to win. So I lost you. There you go. I lost you. You muted me, I think. You no, know, yeah, I'm great. Okay, cool.
All right, Brian. Well, I appreciate you coming on the podcast and, and talking about your brands. I really appreciate it. You bet. Is there oh, anything? By the way, the craziest thing I did was at a golf tournament before we started. I hired yeah. an airplane. You hired an airplane? With one of those banner signs. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I didn't want to pay the fees of how much <laughs> the sponsor of the holes. So I just said, I'll just put my name on every one of the holes and we'll just fly <laughs> around. So that one was pretty controversial, but it worked. Hey, hey, that's successful. That's what I asked for. Successful. Exactly. Well, I appreciate it and love to play golf with you anytime and uh, let's stay connected.